Nissan Patrol is a legendary off-road vehicle, and its reputation can probably only be rivaled by Toyota with its Land Cruiser models. It has conquered many markets, and in the Middle East and Australia, it holds a cult status. Speaking of the Patrol Y62, it's hard not to notice the similarities with the first-generation Nissan Armada, and it's not by chance it's nothing but an evolution of that model. The platform of the Armada became the foundation for the creation of the new Patrol. The convergence was so profound that for the first few years of production, Nissan retained the port-injected engine from the previous generation in the base versions. The company decided that it would be much simpler to streamline production, and instead of having two different platforms, they opted for one. However, to avoid confusing buyers with names, they kept Armada for the American market and Patrol for the rest of the world. As of today, not everyone can easily distinguish the models externally. It's understandable, since we're dealing with the same SUV, where the main difference boils down to various body kits. The VK56 VD engine is considered new, only for those drivers who, after owning the Y61, decided to buy the new Patrol. Moreover, if you had a Nissan Armada or Infiniti QX56 before, you already have a general idea about this engine, as the VK56 VD is an evolution of the VK56 DE used in those models. Thus, through improvements, the VK56 VD emerged, but what are the main differences? The most significant difference is the fuel injection system. The last letters in the engine's name, VD, indicate the use of direct fuel injection. Fuel under high pressure, created by the high pressure fuel pump, is injected directly into the cylinders through special fuel injectors in the cylinder heads, bypassing the intake channels. All the engineering solutions applied by the engineers have significantly increased the engine's efficiency, reduced fuel consumption, and lowered emissions of harmful substances into the atmosphere. Yet, not everything is as positive as it may seem. Direct injection has its significant drawbacks that have become apparent in this engine. Issues with carbon deposits have become a regular occurrence with this engine. One could observe a layer of carbon buildup on the valves and in the intake manifold, leading to power loss, increased fuel consumption, and, in more severe cases, ignition misfires. The only solution in this case is a thorough cleaning of the valves and intake manifold at specialized auto repair shops. Crankcase gases of the engine also play a significant role in carbon deposits formation. In this case, a good recommendation would be to install an oil catch can, which helps collect oil vapors from the crankcase, preventing them from entering the intake system. At the beginning of production, owners of Infiniti QX56 and Nissan Patrol with VK56 engines often complained about vibrations and power loss. Some diagnostics may reveal errors such as incorrect operation of the Variable Valve Timing Control VTC system, and misfire errors in the cylinders. There may be no errors, but in the engine operating parameters, you can encounter a situation where one of the camshafts operates with a significant delay in angles. There will be no errors, since the timing retard angle did not exceed 10 degrees, but there is nothing normal here. Repairs are required before it's too late, namely, replacement of the timing chains. Interestingly, it was the left chain that stretched, while the right one remained in perfect condition. All this happened due to a design defect. The issue lies in the fact that, for some reason, Nissan decided to install a single plunger pump for the HPFP on the left side, instead of the five plunger as it was before. This pump caused a shock load on the left chain, leading to its significant premature stretching. In some cases, at around 70,000 miles, a critical situation arose where the link sawed through the oil sprayer of the chain, causing metal shavings to enter the engine. The uneven engine operation, including ignition misfires, led to the destruction of catalytic converters and wear of the piston group, resulting in increased oil consumption. Facing this issue, Nissan changed the chain supplier and issued a bulletin prescribing the replacement of chains in this engine with stronger ones. Approximately since 2016, this problem has been resolved and new engines come from the factory with reinforced chains. Oil changes should be performed as frequently as possible due to the tendency of direct injection engines to develop carbon buildup. An interval of 4,500 miles is considered optimal. Since the VK56 engine has direct injection, it's recommended to use fuel with an octane rating of at least 89. Some may think that for naturally aspirated engines, 87 octane is acceptable, but this is a grave mistake that could lead to costly engine repairs in the future. Otherwise, it's a fairly good motor, but a good lifespan can only be expected with proper maintenance. 
With all due respect to Nissan engineers, but much more variety of engines was expected from them. The previous generation, Y61, had an impressive variety of engines to offer buyers, although not all of them were equally reliable. Among them, one could find absolutely legendary engines capable of lasting a million miles. Of course, we are referring to the engines with the TB and TD indexes. People who are familiar with the subject matter will not argue that such engines hold a special place in the history of engine building. Credit must be given to the Arab monarchies because thanks to them, we can still buy the Y61 brand new. In the Middle Eastern countries, this SUV has attained cult status. And it's hard to believe, but they love the patrol body style so much that they even bought an entire production line in Japan where the previous Y61 model was made, just to ensure the production of this model wouldn't stop. By the way, when we reach 3,000 subscribers, we'll definitely make a bonus episode about the Y61 and find out why it was granted a second life. However, the new patrol not only abandoned diesel versions, but also limited the choice of gasoline motors to just two VK series engines. The emphasis was placed on a powerful new motor with direct fuel injection, and perhaps Nissan thought that this engine would be more than enough to satisfy customer demand. Yet not everyone needed a new thermally loaded V8 with direct injection and potential future problems as a result. The engine lineup definitely needed a reliable, time-tested engine, even if it wasn't as powerful. It took Nissan seven years to make a decision, and in 2017, another motor was introduced for the Arab Market Patrol. The choice fell on the VQ40DE. This engine has been in production since 2004 and is well known to drivers and mechanics worldwide thanks to models like the Pathfinder and Xterra. The VQ series engines are very successful, and their owners complain more about fuel consumption than about breakdowns. It features port fuel injection, which prevents engine carbon buildup issues and allows trouble-free operation on 87 octane gasoline. Nevertheless, if you use gasoline with a higher octane rating, the catalytic converter will last longer. This motor certainly deserves attention, but its cooling system is not well designed and it tends to overheat quite often. Without careful maintenance of the engine radiator's cleanliness and the condition of its fans, valve cover gaskets can quickly harden leading to oil leaks. Additionally, due to the absence of hydraulic lifters, valve clearances will need to be adjusted. Nevertheless, it's an excellent old school Nissan engine with a lifespan of over 500,000 miles. The Nissan Patrol Y62 comes with a JATCO automatic transmission labeled as JR711E, designed to handle up to 600 Newton meters of torque. The version with the top of the line 5.6 liter engine reaches a maximum of 560, indicating a small margin of torque for the transmission. And this information should be taken into account by anyone considering engine tuning in the future. At the same time, versions with the VQ40 engine have a maximum torque output of around 394 Newton meter. In this configuration, the load on the transmission is significantly lower, so one can expect a longer lifespan of operation. This transmission, like the VK56 engine, has been in production for a long time, and many drawbacks have been addressed, but there are some peculiarities that owners need to pay attention to. Oil changes should be performed every 10,000 to 15,000 miles, depending on driving style. For some, this may seem like a short interval, but it is necessary because experience shows that at around 40,000 miles, the oil becomes completely unsuitable for use. You may wonder why there is such a short interval. It's all due to the design of the automatic transmission. Acceleration occurs thanks to the friction of the torque converter, which almost closes, leaving a thin layer of oil for torque transmission and heat dissipation. Consequently, even with oil present, there is still heating and wear on the friction regardless of driving style. The driving mode and gearbox cooling also play a significant role in the rapid wear of the friction components. Because the transmission adapts to the driver's driving style, sudden acceleration can cause delayed responses and shift holdbacks, subjecting the friction components to excessive stress. To avoid this, it's best to apply the accelerator pedal more smoothly. The cooling system is poorly designed, with its radiator positioned quite low, quickly accumulating dirt, which often leads to unwanted transmission overheating. While these words may sound daunting, in reality the gearbox does not cause much trouble for its owner. Simply by changing the oil and cleaning the filter, you can achieve a quite good lifespan of up to 250,000 miles before the transmission requires significant overhaul. But if 250,000 miles doesn't seem sufficient to you, there are options for enhancements that can significantly increase the lifespan 
of transmission components. One of them is installing an additional radiator with an integrated thermostat. It helps prevent overheating. The thing is under heavy loads. The oil in the gearbox can heat up to 140 degrees, which significantly affects its durability. By installing an additional radiator, you can expect a temperature reduction to around 80 degrees. This will result in reduced wear and tear, extended oil lifespan, and smoother transmission shifts. Another option involves the absence of a fine filtration filter in the automatic transmission, but there is slippage in the torque converter. This characteristic leads to relatively rapid contamination of the oil, with wear products from the torque converter's friction elements, which being composite quickly begin to leave scratches in the soft aluminum hydroblock, and their adhesive composition clogs the solenoid. Accordingly, this transmission requires a filter of larger capacity. The MAN WD724 filter used in commercial transport and trucks such as the Mercedes Unimog truck off-road vehicle is perfectly suited for this purpose. With a bit of effort and by installing these systems on your transmission, you can easily expect the standard lifespan of the gearbox to be doubled while also saving more money on oil changes in the future. Moving on to the suspension, it's worth noting that the Patrol is equipped with the Proprietary Hydraulic Body Motion Control System, abbreviated as HBMC. The principle of the system involves the flow of fluid between the shock absorbers, which eliminates body roll in corners and makes off-road driving as comfortable as possible. Perhaps it doesn't sound too durable, but in reality, the system is quite reliable. The only drawback is that when replacing the shock absorbers, you'll need to bleed the entire system and replace the fluid. However, the shock absorbers have a good lifespan. It's worth noting that not all patrol models are equipped with the HBMC system. Cheaper versions come with a standard suspension with a stabilizer bar. Despite the reliability of the hydraulic body motion control maintenance of the standard suspension will definitely be cheaper in the long run. It's amazing that despite all the power and mass, the brake discs last for 80,000 miles, which is definitely a very good indicator for such a large SUV. The transfer case and differentials are very robust. The oil change interval for them depends on the driving style. For calm drivers, it is recommended to change the oil every 35,000 miles. The rear AC condenser circuit, which provides cold air to the passengers in the third row of seats, often develops leaks. The solution to this problem is quite complex because replacing the aluminum pipes requires separating the frame from the body. However, specialized auto repair shops have learned to solve the problem using alternative methods. Most likely, you will be offered to either block the rear AC circuit or replace it using special reinforced hoses, but this will require disassembling the rear part of the cabin and the rear heating system. Often after 100,000 miles, the oil level sensor fails. The plastic element in the sensor can crack over time, causing oil to leak rapidly from the engine through it. If this issue is overlooked, it can lead to engine overheating and subsequent replacement. The cost of this sensor is not high, so it makes sense to replace it preemptively rather than waiting for oil leakage to occur. The plastic around the radiator filler neck often deteriorates, and unfortunately, any repairs to this part do not lead to long-term results. Therefore, when this malfunction occurs, the radiator must be replaced entirely. This issue typically arises after 100,000 miles. To be honest, Nissan is not known for producing corrosion-resistant vehicles, but this generation of the Patrol is an exception. The body indeed has excellent rust protection. However, underneath the car on some transmission components, rust can start appearing relatively quickly. Therefore, it's advisable not to delay and perform a thorough anti-corrosion treatment of the entire underside of the vehicle shortly after purchasing it. This will help save a significant amount of money in the future. Many blame Nissan for not updating the generation for 14 years, but typically it's journalists who focus on this aspect. In their reviews, you'll hear maximum information about the engine's displacement, power, and nothing about its problems and durability. But is this conservatism really that bad for us? As we can see, this time was enough for the VK56 to get rid of serious issues, and Nissan brought back the VQ40 for the Arabian market, undoubtedly pleasing the most loyal fans of the model who value reliability above all else. The upgraded automatic transmission also boasts good reliability, but at the same time, the absence of a manual gearbox in the latest facelifts is disappointing. 
Surprisingly, the intelligent suspension also doesn't require constant attention. It's worth praising the all-wheel drive system separately, whose off-road capabilities are among the best in its class. It's just a pity that the front and rear bumpers won't allow you to fully enjoy off-roading. Here we can all envy Australians who are also big fans of the Patrol, and for their market, a fully off-road version called the Warrior is released. Indeed, the cost and availability of spare parts from Nissan are also a great bonus, and the repair technology has been mastered by almost every car service during this time. All of this makes the Nissan Patrol a full-size SUV with the lowest ownership cost, even with its huge V8. With the V6 engine, it becomes simply unbeatable for its competitors in this ranking as repair and fuel costs drop even further. And that's all for today. It would be interesting to know if you would buy an Armada with the VQ40 engine in the USA or if you would still prefer the more powerful VK56. Write about it in the comments. See you next time and remember, know the car you're about to buy.